Today we have interesting event in the German Bundestag. It, um, the Bundestag votes a resolution for North Macedonia, for Macedonian language and identity. Um, but what is the purpose? What guarantee does it bring? I'm asking you this because the opposition had some kind of messages that we don't have problem with Berlin, but with Bulgaria. Well, the idea is that uh, the members of parliament um, from the coalition fraction wanted to show solidarity uh, with North Macedonia and wanted to pay their respect to Macedonian people and to just underline our German position regarding language, identity and culture. Um, so the purpose is of course that we have debates about the constitutional change in North Macedonia and um, we feel that a lot of people um, have the feeling of um, being afraid what this uh, constitutional change and the past towards the European Union could make with their identity. And our concept of European Union is a concept of diversity, of uh, acceptance and respect of uh, the European institutions for uh, languages um, and cultures. And uh, we wanted to refrain that. Um, also, the parliament wanted to make this clear and public. Uh, some of the German media announced that um, the resolution will request from the federal government to influence on Bulgaria. Uh, will Berlin influence on official Sofia to not hinder uh, EU integration process to North Macedonia or to put Bulgaria to put additional conditions in future? Well, in last summer there was a compromise reached uh, with all EU member states and between uh, Macedonian uh, government and Bulgaria and we stick to this compromise and um, this compromise means that the constitutional change has to be done and then it shall be a free pass uh, for North Macedonia within the negotiations of course where we want to see the reforms and the pass towards the European Union has to be done and delivered. We as German government we are in a constant talks with our friends and partners in Bulgaria and of course we also exchange our positions regarding the question on how to deal uh, with North Macedonia and uh, let's say it this way we perhaps don't agree uh, on all positions with them but we try to positively engage uh, with both sides because our aim is to get North Macedonia on the EU track as fast as possible in this summer. Do you think that this resolution maybe will have will be reflected somehow in the Macedonian domestic political debate on the constitutional uh, changes? Well, our wish was to show that um, perhaps I understand or we understand that it is really difficult for a lot of people in North Macedonia to emotionally but also intelligent by intelligence uh, understand the approach um, uh, from Bulgarian side regarding uh, these questions. But we also found out that, you know, perhaps you shouldn't focus only on the problems in the European Union and you should be aware of that a country like Germany is having quite a clear position on the question of language identity and culture. Um, so perhaps one should focus a bit more on the ones who are even perhaps a bit bigger than Bulgaria and who can deliver you also that we, you can trust in the German position that on the path towards European Union we will commit to uh, having a position um, that is guaranteeing the identity, the culture and the language, uh, Macedonian culture, identity and language also on this path. And we think this is quite obvious also uh, in the European treaties and in the core principles of the European Union. Uh, the opposition demands a delayed effect on the constitutional changes. Is this real? Well, I heard uh, rumors about this uh, and I cannot uh, really comment because it was only rumors and I'm not like officially briefed on that. But for me it's clear. No, uh, the opposition leader already said that they will uh, want uh, a delayed effect on the constitutional changes. Yeah, I mean... I heard those rumors, but uh, I, I will not comment on that. I can just say that 
the European proposal, which was last year agreed, is not only agreed by Bulgarian Parliament and by Macedonian Parliament, it is also agreed by EU27. We will not change negotiation framework and we will stick to the deal which was reached in this compromise uh, between North Macedonia, Bulgaria and between uh, the EU27. Uh, one month ago you had an um, official visit on uh, Skopje, you had a lot of meetings with MPAs, with uh, the government, the opposition and etc. Uh, are you planning to meet again uh, the leader of the opposition, uh, Mitskoski, and what will you tell him? Well, actually I was, I think, in North Macedonia every two weeks the last <laughs> uh, in the last time and um, this time I'm here in Struga and I will not have uh, like Macedonian politic meetings only. Um, I'm meeting people from all the region and I have Maybe to leave tomorrow next, morning. In the next period. I'm always open to meet with everybody and of course I always also like to talk to uh, the leader of the opposition. Uh, sometimes we don't agree but it's always a fruitful conversation. Uh, will Macedonian-German relations be put uh, into a question if the constitutional changes are not made? Well, as I said last time when I was here, um, for us it is clear that we want to have a decision of uh, North Macedonia on the future path of the European Union. And if you like it or not, the decision is done by accepting constitutional change or not. And this may not feel well, but this is the way how it is. And I actually personally am also convinced that the text of the constitutional amendments is a good text. And me personally, I think that it fits also to the concept of the statehood of North Macedonia. And it's a good way to go. If the people uh, in parliament, the MPs in parliament, cannot find the necessary majority to adopt this, for us it will be a decision which has to be respected, but which will be interpreted as and this time we don't want to proceed further towards European Union. Um, and this doesn't mean that Germany will not be a friend of North Macedonia anymore, but we will respect this decision also with this uh, um, uh, uh, content. Uh, you mentioned that there will be difficulties if we don't uh, start the, the second uh, IGC soon. What kind of difficulties? And is there any kind of plan B, maybe, if we won't do the constitutional changes? Well, the biggest difficulty is time. And uh, in general in the region, but also in this sense, in North Macedonia, I'm surprised that many politicians have the feeling that they have a lot of time. North Macedonia is the country which lost so many times because so many others, not only others, but also others, made mistakes. And now to say, okay, we lost already so much time, we can lose some more time in while Ukraine is fighting this horrible war, uh, I think it's not a good decision. Nobody knows what will be in half a year, or in one year, or in two years. How will the world look like? Try to bring your European integration path into the dry terms before bigger problems may arise on world scale. This is what I think is to do. This is a historic momentum of making the path of North Macedonia towards European Union irreversible. And use this momentum now. We don't know how the world will look in one year. And I'm sure that if it's not done now, you will lose at least two or three years progress towards European Union, at least. If not even, there will be a problem to, to come back in general. Yeah? Listen, you know, European Union is asking Macedonians from kind of pre-marriage. Yeah? Yes. And some people in, Mes in North Macedonia say, yeah, we also love you, but we want it later when there's better situation. Well, I don't know if in private life this is working quite often that later you get a second chance that European Union still wants. Yeah? So I think, take this momentum. We are asking you for coming. Uh, come, please. Uh, is enlargement still in the focus of EU? Yes, more than ever. And Ukraine will go. Ukraine will deliver not only on the front lines, also in the textbooks of enlargement. Uh, this is a key. Uh, and this is also, this will push also 
a lot of pressure on enlargement and uh, it can be very, very positive for the region and also for North Macedonia. But if uh, this country would like now stop for a certain time frame the positive approach towards the European Union because of uh, not um, being able to amend constitutional change, it would be also like difficult to see like, okay, Ukraine is in these circumstances moving so fast and showing so many efforts to go. And North Macedonia has so big problems with, uh, with this constitutional change, which I understand emotionally. Um, I think this would be not a good signal. Yeah? So you can be sure Germany will stay committed, a friend of North Macedonia, whatever happens. But we want you on the path towards the European Union. And for this, it is necessary to go the step of constitutional change. No. Uh, Mr. Saratin, how to restore the um, trust in EU here? Because the latest polls are devastating. Uh, most of the answers of a question why we are not a member state till now so long time are that EU constantly finds excuses. What to tell the citizens here? First, uh, EU is not perfect. EU made mistakes. But of course, also you politicians also made mistakes. Uh, everybody in North Macedonia knows that as well. It's not only the EU which was not delivering the reforms um, so that North Macedonia is not already there yet in the Aki. Um, you can also do all the EU reforms without us delivering. Yeah? Second is, um, EU is not perfect, but it's still a concept which is, which is genius. When you one day will be a member of the European Union, you will see that still it is really not perfect. Even some not perfect deals are done and all the time everybody is quite, un, you know, it's not really perfect. But in the end, the outcome is very, very positive, which you can see from economic success of Germany, by the way, but also of the neighboring states. If you see the Eastern enlargement, look at Poland today compared 20 years, 25 years ago. So although all the time everybody is saying EU is failing, it's not perfect, oh Brussels, oh this bureaucracy, somehow the outcome is quite genius. So this is how it functions. We are all the time together and you have to make every week a deal with all your friends in the EU. So you see each other all the time again and this is making peace. If you one time have a situation that you don't talk to each other anymore, the next week, the next week, the next week, the next week, you will have a bad deal and it will be bad in your pocket. So the European Union is working by having this principle of you see each other so often again that you have to find a way of coming along. It doesn't mean you have to love each other, but not being on terms that you can deal with each other would be not in your interest. And I can just say this is the perfect concept for this region. Also because you're already part of Europe. So where else should you go? I mean, you are Europeans, perhaps more than some people in Northern Europe. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, this is the hard region of European culture. Um, you have this great culture, especially here at Ohrid Lake, you know, when you see the great culture which was done here. You are so purely Europeans. Listen, if, if you're not part of European Union, Europe is not fulfilled, but also this is not the place where this country has to stay. Thank you for your time. Thank you.